So today I was thinking about whether or not this Harbor Freight Thunderbolt charge controller was actually a good value. It was about $21 and change off the shelf at Harbor Freight, so that wouldn't include any discounts or sales. Is this a better value than, say, a Renogy Wanderer charge controller? Obviously, one of the things that stands out about this little charge controller is it's pretty much about as minimalist as it could get, right? So that's a positive if you have a very small space or you're just never going to look at it anyway. All right, you can see them side by side. Obviously, not only is this wander taller and deeper, you can see the footprint there. So one of the other things I do like about this little Thunderbolt is it comes with these quick connects already wired up. That's very nice. Here I had to cut and wire my own in <laughs> to the Wanderer. So if that's the right type of connection for you, that's a good, you know, save, might save you a couple bucks or a couple minutes of setup time. However, if you are wiring into some solar panels or a battery with uh, different style cables, these would actually probably be a hindrance. Whereas this uh, Wanderer is already made for bare wires. You could obviously cut any cables, feed them into the Wanderer. Whereas this is hardwired to these SAE Quick Connects, so then you need an SAE Quick Connect to another type of cable. So then you're guaranteed to be buying more cables. So depending on what type of connections you have, if you have the Harbor Freight solar panel, which does have an SAE quick connect on the end out of the box, then this might be a good option for you. And I got this Wanderer with a kit with the 100 watt solar panel. And obviously that disguises the true cost. It's listed on Amazon right now for just over $31. However, it should be noted that that is for a 30 amp controller, whereas this little guy is only rated at about seven amps. So there's a negative in the column for the Harbor Freight mini charge controller. Now, of course, they do have a more expensive version, but that one's over $75. So that's kind of a different league than what we're discussing here today. If you look at the Renogy 10 amp charge controller, it is only $20 brand new. And the other interesting thing is that unlike this 30 amp version, this one actually has a screen and two USB ports. I understand the screen is not nearly as important as one might think since this unit does have indicator lights to show you whether or not the solar panels are active and whether or not a battery is connected. However, another big difference I noticed even on this $20 version, the 10 amp Renogy, is that it shows it being lithium compatible. Whereas this unit doesn't say anything about lithium. And something else I've noticed for 12 volt battery chargers is if it doesn't say that it does lithium, it is not necessarily meant to be used with lithium or it doesn't have the programming to properly charge, you know, at the most optimal rate. Of course, if you're using the Harbor Freight Thunderbolt 35 amp hour battery, it is not lithium. So that wouldn't even be a concern. Another thing I noticed about this, it only has warnings for high over voltage and under voltage and one indicator light for charging. It doesn't give you any other indicator lights. Whereas this Wanderer is not too much more impressive, but it does give you separate indicators for whether or not the solar is receiving UV rays and whether or not the battery is connected. So you'll see the battery light on all the time. Whereas I understand if this uh, wasn't charging, there would be no lights. All right, so here you can see I hooked up the battery terminal from the charge controller to the battery, and there are no indicator lights of any kind. So we don't know what's going on there. All right, so now I have the battery connected to the Wanderer controller. And you can see there that the battery indicator is on, even though there's no solar input right now, since we're inside. And there you have it. So that's much nicer. Gives you one more little indicator. The 10 amp version actually comes with a screen and the screen gives you a little voltage indication as well, which is pretty nice. You can see it there. This unit also does not come with a load output, whereas this does where you could hook up a 12 volt appliance, maybe like a light bulb or something else 
to be connected full time without going through the battery or maybe it's looped with the battery I'm not really sure but my understanding is that you kind of want to run everything off the battery directly as opposed to off of the charge controller from something like a load output however ironically I say that the 10 the 10 amp $20 energy wanderer does in fact have a load output <laughs> so take that with a grain of salt I'm pretty familiar with this guy I've used him quite a bit at camping trips so I feel very comfortable with that one whereas this one feels well, I do like how tiny it is. Too simplistic and a little too under-engineered for my tastes, especially at the exact same price point. Well, I hope that helps you if you are you know, weighing the costs and benefits of these two charge controllers or something similar, like the 10 amp version of the Wanderer. All right, so if having the absolute smallest charge controller possible isn't your main goal, then I would probably go with something with a, little, a few more features.